Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T Uberse TV. It is a clear, cool, and windy night here in Boston. The Rangers and the Red Sox getting set to heat things up at Fenway Park. It's the middle game of this three-game set between your Rangers and the Boston Red Sox. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us on this Wednesday night of Rangers baseball. Rangers trying to get back on the winning side of things. And uh, they will send their revamped offense out, if you will, revamped, that is, for the month of May. And it all centers around the guys in the middle. And the biggest of those men is Prince Fielder. It definitely is, Buzz. And we talked in the pregame show how the Rangers have kind of resurfaced as an offensive right. team in May after struggling in April. Well, Prince didn't struggle in April. He had over 300 in April. He's hit over 360 in May. Last night, had a good ball game. Pulled a hanging slider down the line. Could have been a double if it got in the corner. Ended up being a single. A little bit later in the game, takes another slider. This one more out over the plate. Hits it off the green monster for a double. So another multi-hit game for Prince last night. The two hits allow him to lead the league in hitting at 348. He also is third with a 421 average with men in scoring position, and he's been on base more than 40% of the time. Prince has been there from day one, been consistent all the way through May. Well, and with uh, Adrian Beltre heating up, that's a formidable middle of that Ranger order, and they hope that's enough tonight to get them back on the winning side of things and even this series against the Red Sox. We will come back to Fenway Park with more in our free game, Rangers and Red Sox, coming up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Brought to you by the Ford Memorial Day EcoBoost Sales Event. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. By AT&T UVerse TV. UVerse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. A beautiful overhead of Fenway Park, downtown Boston, to 
the site of game two of this three game series. Rangers uh, losing last night to the Red Sox by a four to three count. And before we get things started, let's head down to the field and check in with Emily Jones. Yeah, Ross Detweiler placed on the 15 day DL earlier this week. That cleared the way for Phil Klein to make his first major league start today. He says the transition from reliever to starter has been a relatively smooth yet quick one. It's been good. I mean, pretty quick for sure. But, um, you know, I've always been a big routine guy, even as a reliever. So um, starting has been really nice to, you know, at least know when I'm throwing. That's a different aspect that I'm not used to. But um, I think it's easier to get in my routines from there. Um, you know, as far as throwing every five days and playing in your day one through four as well. His last two outings in Round Rock were starts. His last one, 84 pitches, which is the longest outing. No word yet on what kind of pitch count he'll be on. I'm assuming it will be uh, based on the game dictated situation. So we will see what Phil Klein has in his first major league start. It is game two between the Rangers and the Red Sox from Fenway. We'll have the first pitch coming up next on Fox Sports Southwest. A unique area, and uh, that is just a big part of it. The uh, street vendor, and boy, you get some great food over there. Well, time now, and Tom will tell us about the Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers starting lineup. Now, the Rangers will start off with Shinsu Chu in the leadoff spot in right field. Delano DeShields moves up to second, playing left field. Prince Fielder is the DH. Adrian Beltre is at third base. Mitch Moreland bats fifth. At first base, Elvis Andrus is in the sixth slot. Leonis Martin gets the start in center field, followed by Robinson Chirinos, the catcher, and Tommy Field, the second baseman. And that lineup will face the 25-year-old right-hander Joe Kelly. Our scouting report on the hard-throwing right-hander, and he is a hard thrower. Rangers will uh, try and make him throw strikes early in the ballgame, see if he can get himself in a little bit of hot water. But this guy... Uh, can uh, throw a fastball in the upper 90s at will. And the uh, odd thing about it is he never has been a big strikeout pitcher, even with that kind of velocity. Gets a lot of ground balls, though, and makes it very uncomfortable for uh, hitters to work against him. And the defense behind him tonight who will be busy, no doubt. Looks like this. Handler Ramirez in left, Mookie Betts in center, Daniel Nave in right, Mike Napoli at first. 
Dustin Pedroia, Xander Bogarts up the middle. Brock Holt gets the start at third. The injured uh, Pablo Sandoval out with a sore knee. And Blake Swihart is catching for Joe Kelly. Well, the Rangers come in having uh, lost last night. They are now 10-10 and 10 on the road, 16-23 and 23 overall, and they trail the very hot Houston Astros now by 10 full games. Houston winning this afternoon. Shinsu Chu takes a strike from Joe Kelly. Chu, a 240 average with six home runs. That is tops on the ball club. He has had a little bit of experience against Joe Kelly. You saw three out of six. That pitch foul off to the left. Chu, 17 RBI to go along with the uh, six home runs. Good look at Fenway Park. Crowd uh, on this cool evening. Temperatures in the mid-50s or so with a pretty brisk breeze blowing in from the left field corner toward the right field corner. There is strikeout number one for Joe Kelly. And Shinsu Chu couldn't handle that fastball. Well, Kelly's first start of the year was pretty solid. You can see the movement on that ball tailing away, almost up and away the way it's moving. His last start was a pretty good start as well. Six and a third, only one run. Got a no decision in a two to one win against Seattle. But prior to that, in between, he had given up at least five earned runs in every start. He had an ERA of nine in the four starts before his last one. So in spite of the great arm, he had really been struggling until his game against Seattle. One ball, no strikes to Delano De Shields, who steps in as a 268 hitter. It's a strike to even the count from Kelly. Delano moving back and forth between the ninth spot and the uh, number two spot in the order in the last uh, three or four days. Now one and two. And Delano continuing to have a pretty good on base percentage, so it gives Jeff Bannister several different options with him. Last night hitting ninth for the Rangers. Here's the slider from Kelly, and it's just off the outer edge. Two balls and two strikes. Kelly, part of the deal uh, between the Red Sox and the Cardinals. John Lackey went over to uh, St. Louis. Joe Kelly and uh, Alan Craig, the outfielder, came to Boston. Still two and two. Jeff Bannister, his club at uh, seven games under 500 at the moment. They have been uh, up and down there, nine and nine in this month of uh, May, starting to turn things around a bit. Here's a hot shot off the glove of Napoli. It goes to Pedroia, who feeds to Kelly Cover. Well hit ball by the lineup. That's one of those balls that that gets down in the corner the way it can sometimes in Fenway Park. Hits right near the foul pole. Sometimes those balls can roll all the way around, hug the wall past the bullpen, in which case Delano could run for a long time. But Napoli's able to knock it down. Pedroia is there, and you can tell Kelly's pretty athletic as easily as he got over to first base to cover. Red Sox converted. Well, that's your routine 3 4 1 put out at first. No, no luck in the first uh, couple of hitters against Joe Kelly. Here's Prince Fielder. One ball, no strikes. Fielder, the league's leading hitter, steps in uh, at a 344 average. Hard hit, but right at the third baseman hole. And that'll be the final out of the first inning. A 1 2 3 frame for Joe Kelly and the Red Sox. After a half inning, no score.
Well, the Rangers failed to score on the top of the first. Now here's Tom with the uh, Amica Boston Red Sox line. Center fielder Mookie Betts leads off, followed by Dustin Pedroia, the second baseman. Big Poppy, David Ortiz hits third. Hanley Ramirez in left field bats fourth. Mike Napoli is at first base. Daniel Nava is in right field. Brock Holt gets the start at third base. Xander Bogarts is the shortstop. And the catcher is Blake Swihart. And that lineup facing the 26-year-old right-hander Phil Klein. The Ohioan making his first major league start, just his fifth professional start. It uh, is a new scenario for Phil Klein. There's our progressive scouting report on Phil, his first major league start. We'll try to establish that fastball command early so that he can get to his slider and changeup. Throwing more changeups as a starter. That's a pitch that he kind of shelved when he was working out of the bullpen. Didn't feel that he needed those three pitches and he was trying to work it back into his repertoire. But basically a fastball slider type pitcher. Mike Maddox, uh, very big on keeping things simple. I think that's what Phil Klein tries to do. Two and one, the count to Mookie Betts. How's that next pitch back to even the count? Betts a 227 average. Five home runs from that leadoff spot. 21 RBI. That's the second most by a leadoff hitter in the American League. Klein has uh, his roots as a reliever would tell you. Coming from that stretch. Left center field. Long run for Leonis Martin. And he wow. grabs it on the dead run. <laughs> there was so much daylight between the ball and Leonis when he first started. And he just plain outran that line drive. He was playing shaded toward right center field. Bets it at the left center field. And you get an idea with that view how far he had to go. And what a beautiful running catch it was in left center field. And he also jammed that left wrist into the scoreboard out there. Right there. Came up wincing in pain. Yeah, he got his glove off right now. Oh, what a catch, though. Goodness. So one very big out. Now Dustin Pedroia steps in. Nothing in one. Pedroia, a 280 average. That's the highest batting average of any of the uh, Boston regulars. Five home runs, 15 runs driven in. It's out of play on the first base side. Nothing in two. Red Sox come in as a team hitting just 234. On base percentage. Right in the middle of the pack in the American League now. They're up to 313. Don Farrell's club. One game under 500 at 19 and 20 as we interplay here tonight. One and two to Pedroia. Red Sox uh, trailing the Yankees. Yankees and Tampa Bay sit atop the AL East. Red Sox are two and a half games back. Baltimore a half game further back than the Red Sox. And then Toronto is trailing the other four teams. Line a long look in. Now the right hander is ready. One two pitch coming. Breeze is going to push that back into the seats down the line. Much of the wind, and it's fairly strong now. It's a uh, good 15 to 18 miles an hour here this evening, blowing from that left field corner out toward the right field corner. And again, uh, because this is a, a very low stadium, the, uh, the top of the second deck is not all that high above the playing field. You get a lot more wind affecting the flight of the ball. Will push high pop-ups uh, pretty drastically toward that corner. Got him swinging. Fastball up, Pedroia. Good not hang on to him, hold up with it. And that is out number two. Now the Ranger defense tonight delivered to you by Fred Loya Insurance. You saw Leonis Martin in center. He's flanked by Delano to Shields and left. Shinsu Chu is in right. Moreland at first, Field and Andrews up the middle, Beltray at third, and Robinson Chirinos he is catching this evening. The two up, two away, David Ortiz. 
Big Poppy up there. DHing as always, a 244 average. Gets that right into the teeth of the ship. Shallow right field, and that's where Tommy Field is playing. Oh, it is a three up, three down evening for Phil Klein. No score after one. Sox, the second of a four-game set, and fans will be treated that night to a post-game fireworks show set to music that will kick off the start of summer. Head to TexasRangers.com slash tickets to pick up your seats. Adrian Beltre starting things off for the Rangers here in the second inning. And he takes strike one. Both pitchers in that first inning made 11 pitches, both Phil Klein and Joe Kelly, eight strikes for both of them. So they are pretty good roll, the two of them getting exactly what they wanted to against the other team. Beltre, 258. That's as high as his average has been this year. Five home runs, 15 driven in. Off the outer edge. Two and one. The be spectacle Joe Kelly into the wind. Base hit to right field. Well, that one uh, not hit extremely sharply by Adrian, but it found the hole on that right side, and he is aboard with the first base hit of this ball game. You know, early in the game, it's in the first thing that ball is hit right off the end of the bat and has a lot of spin on it as it finds its way into right field. In the first inning, there's a number of balls hit hard. Prince Fielder hit his ball sharply without a shift, really, right at the third baseman. Only a slight shift. Ball bets it to center field was hit hard. The ball that Big Poppy hit to second base was hit hard. The Shields hit one hard right at first base. So four out of the six outs were fairly well struck. But one on, nobody out. Here's Mitch Moreland. Takes ball one. Mitch at 290 for the year. A couple of home runs. He has driven in a dozen. 22 ball games for the Rangers. This is game number 39. Make that 40 of the year. Mitch uh, missing 17 of them with that uh, surgery on his left elbow. So the way that breeze is blowing tonight, Buzz, there's probably going to be a hitter or two disappointed when a high fly ball falls right at the base of the green monster that normally would have snuck out of here. <laughs> Those high, lazy fly balls, especially the ones that are lofted by left-hand hitters, might not carry out of here some of them tonight. We'll see. 
That's what you want as a pitcher. Something, just something to keep the marginal shots in the ball. Yeah. Yeah. That might help one hit down the right yeah. field line a little bit. But still, at least they've got to hit it to get it out of right field. That might bring the pesky pole into play. Yeah. And wrap one around that thing. One and two to Mitch. Beltre, a modest lead at first as Kelly checks him. Kelly tuning that up to 95. He will uh, work most of the time between 94 and 96 miles an hour. Then folks around the, the Red Sox feel that when he tries to pump it up to the upper 90s, his ball really straightens out. He, comes, he becomes more hittable the harder he throws. I know it sounds like a contradiction in, in terms, but that's what happens to uh, quite a few people. Now time called. Try to muscle up on a ball, and all of a sudden it, it may go a little faster, but it has no movement on it. Kelly came over from the St. Louis Cardinals to the Red Sox last year and had 10 starts late in the season. It went pretty well for him. He was four and two at a solid ERA. Only gave up 47 hits in 61 innings, but he walked 32 batters in 61 innings. A few too many. Still one and two to Mitch. Beltre being held on by former teammate Mike Napoli at first base. Base hit right center field. Betts trying to cut it off, and he has to dive for it to get it. And that allows Beltre to move into third unmolested. Stopping at first with a long single is Mitch Moreland. And the Rangers, though, have runners at the corners now and nobody out with Elvis Andrews coming up. That's some kind of play by Betts. I think he was might have been a little surprised how that ball, how fast it rolled in right center field. He's around in left center field. If he dives and doesn't get that, that ball is going to carry him right out at the 420 sign. Mitch probably would have had a triple and Adrian would have scored easily, but he runs it down and then miraculously holds Mitch to a single on that play. What a nice play. Both center fielders have had gems early in the game. A two on, nobody out here is Elvis with a chance to get the Rangers out in front. Elvis at 227. He lines one to right field. That will get the job done. Sends Nava back, tagging at third. Coming down the line is Adrian Beltre. Steps on home plate, and the Rangers have a 1-0 lead on the sacrifice line drive by Elvis Andrews. Well, Elvis didn't waste any time. Jumped on the first fastball he saw and lined it solidly right straight at the right fielder. The Rangers on the board early. Well, Elvis getting high fives in the Ranger dugout. And now Leonis Martin will step up. Leonis had that pinch hit home run in last night's ball game. Pinch hit in the ninth inning and knocked one out of here against Koji Uehara. That was the uh, first pinch hit home run for a Ranger since last April, a year ago, April. Michael Choice came off the bench and uh, had a home run at home. The second for one, the return not in time. Not much that uh, the Red Sox could do to turn that over. Joe Kelly had to reach for the ball, and by the time he got his feet underneath him to make a throw, was Martin able to leg out the return throw. Joe Kelly definitely moves around pretty well on the mound. But you're right, there wasn't anything he could do except get the lead runner. Through a 94 mile an hour sinker to Bogarts at shortstop. <laughs> a little lower than Bogarts probably wanted it. He'd take his shins right off. He didn't <laughs> catch that thing. <laughs> no, Martin at first. We'll see if he uh, tries to get himself into scoring position. Robinson Chirinos is the hitter. Chirinos, a 188 average. Three home runs, 14 driven in. Pitch just outside for ball one. Well, last night our AT&T Universe rewind for you. Robinson Torino's getting one that 
tonight probably would have gone into the seats with the wind blowing the way it is. As it was, it got down in that 380 marker around the uh, right side of Fenway Park, and he got a three-bagger, his first Major League triple. He scored one of the two runs the uh, Rangers put up in that inning, and uh, Robinson accounting for his 14th RBI of the year. 1-0 the count. Snap to the first and out at first base, Leonis Martin. Picked off by Blake Swihart. And that'll do it for the Rangers. They do get a run to take the lead. A run on two hits and nobody left after one and a half. It's the Rangers one, the Red Sox nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Brought to you by the Ford Memorial Day EcoBoost sales event. Get to your best injectors Ford dealer today. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Lots of history uh, in the hub city of Boston. Rangers leading 1-0. Back at Fenway Park as Phil Klein works on Hanley Ramirez to start off this second inning. Rangers... Got a run in the top of the second. Hanley Ramirez, the cleanup man for the Red Sox, a 276 average. High in the air down the left field line. The wind is pushing it back into fair territory. Leaping against the wall and taking it is Delino to Shields. Well, that's a that wouldn't have been an out yesterday. That you could see that ball coming down towards center field. Wind uh, wind knocked it down just enough to keep from hitting the monster. So right off the bat we see one like that. I don't know that he hit it all that well but you don't have to hit one very well to hit it right down the line here. You see the line waits for it and it just comes back down right in front of the wall. Might have been off the wall yesterday. Nice play by Delano to Shields and <laughs> Bill Klein said hey that's that's pretty good. <laughs> I got a guy out there who can catch those. Nice job. No one out, and Mike Napoli now will step to the plate. Napoli hit a home run last night that spent no time in the air. This was a rocket that uh, went over the monster, then bounced back in after hitting a sign. It's about uh, oh, 20 feet beyond the green monster, right down the line. Probably shocked some people out there. 
sound of that thing hitting that. Yeah, I, I would think there might be one or two people that never saw this ball. <laughs> that is literally as hard as you could hit a line drive. Might be Mike Stanton, uh, Giancarlo Stanton might be able to hit one harder than that. Nelly Cruz maybe. But if there if theirs came off the bat at 119 miles per hour or so, the one by Napoli had to be over 115. Yeah, Mike Napoli continuing to swing a hot bat the last couple of days, singles to right. One on, one out. Daniel Nava coming up. Yeah, pretty good slider down and away. Napoli hit that right off the end of the bat. A little bit like the base hit the Beltre had. Almost the exact same thing, really. The right field. So Napoli is the first Red Sox base runner of the night against Phil Klein. Daniel Nava now will come up. Nava hitting just 151. Shane Victorino uh, sharing right field duties. One ball, no strikes. Nava 0 for 3 in yesterday's ball game. There his numbers. And he just has gotten off to a, a very slow start. Currently 0 for 6. Blind a check of Napoli at first. One and one. And a couple of shout outs. Red Ranger fans that are in town. Betty and Gary Waits are here celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. They want to say hi to their grandkids, JC and Blake Waits, back in Midlothian. Congratulations on your anniversary. Glad you're here at the ballpark. Phil. That looked like this, the changeup that uh, we haven't seen very often with him as a reliever. But we probably will see more of in the starting role. One ball and two strikes. Major infield uh, a step or so around to the right. Their double play depth up the middle. Got him swinging. Good tailing fastball on Bill Klein. Gets his second strike out of the night. They're two away, and Brock Holt coming out. That was a pitch slightly out of the strike zone, almost the same type of pitch that Pedroia swung at. Of course, Pedroia was up and in, but both of them a little bit out of the strike zone, and both hitters couldn't lay off them with two strikes, and those are the two strikeouts that Phil has in the first six hitters. Now here's Brock Holt, 307 average for Holt. A home run, nine driven in, filling in for uh, Pablo Sandoval at third base tonight. Sandoval, of course, last night hit right on his left knee by Sam Freeman. Freeman came into the ball game and plunked Sandoval with a fastball. Well, you could hear that all over Fenway. Oh, and one, the count to hold. We'll take a look back at last night. Freeman dealing to Pablo Sandoval. Boy, nowhere for the big guy to go on this. That's terrible. Just could not avoid it. He did walk off under more or less under his own power. Check swing roller foul. The count moves to one and two. Another shutout shout out we've got. I, I can remember reading the same one for about the last five or six years. All these guys would like to say hi to their friends and family back in Arlington and Fort Worth. It's a baseball golf trip that these eight guys have been taking for 22 years. They <laughs> finally, with Boston, completed the circuit. They've seen all the major league parks now. Six Tarrant County family lawyers, two Tarrant County family district judges. To try to read their names quickly. Judge Jerry Hennigan, Judge Michael Sinha, Mark Cochran from Arlington, Wayne Ward from Fort Worth, Ulysses Whitcotton from Fort Worth, Gary Ort from Arlington, Stuart Rowe from Fort Worth, and David Rulis from Dow Worthington Gardens. So, congratulations on your trip to Boston. You've seen all the major league parks. Hope you had a blast. Hi to all the friends and family back home. 
Oh, I guess the lawyers figured if the judges are out of town, we can go out of town with them, right? <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> Got to shut the courts down. David's house in Dalworth and the Gardens is the one, if you've ever driven through there at Christmas time and seen the one with must have a million lights <laughs> covering a whole huge house, huge backyard, tennis courts and everything. It's just amazing. 3-2 pitch is fouled back, and we'll try it again. He actually lives right around the corner from Richard Price, the Rangers equipment manager. If you're saying, who's Richard Price? He's more affectionately known as Hoggy to the people around the Rangers and anyone that knows him. His dad's probably watching Al. Al's called Papa Hog. Papa Hog, yeah. So, Papa Hog, if you're watching, we're all hope you're doing well. We all say hello to you back in Arlington. And down with the Lions and the Slice to left field. And a nice running catch by Delano to Shields up against the sidewall. Side retired, no runs a hit and one left. After two, Rangers one, Red Sox nothing. here at Fenway the Rangers on top of the Red Sox one to nothing my shameless tour of ballpark food continues at Fenway with the El Tiante it's a Cuban sandwich named after Luis Tiant the beloved Red Sox pitcher from Cuba so it makes sense it's a Cuban sandwich it's supposed to be infused with flair and spice so I of course am going to give it a try nothing like me eating on live television I taste the flair and the spice, <laughs> a little bit of mustard, and it's very good. How's it compared to a lobster roll? Um, I'm going to put the lobster roll in the top spot, um, but this is very serviceable. Very serviceable. <laughs> I think Luis has done a very good job with this. I'll, I'll buy you lunch if you can make the guy next to you smile. Will you smile for me? <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Lunch that was on it. you tomorrow, Tom. <laughs> that, that was easy. <laughs> lunch on you. That was the easiest lunch I've ever won. <laughs> Tell the guy to give you 20 bucks so he's paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll continue to roam, guys. I don't know if I'm done eating or not. I can't make any promises, but we've okay. got more good stuff coming up from around Fenway, I promise, including a visit with some of our fans. Seriously. Was that you screaming? <laughs> it came right straight from my head, I feel like. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I've got a GPS, apparently, that tracks 
baseballs. Chirino said he was going to do that. I don't know how close that was, but it sure felt close. <laughs> <laughs> Get back down to the concession stand. I mean, Get out of the line of fire up there. <laughs> two and two, the cap to Robinson Chirinos. That ball is hammered to deep left center field. Way up the alley. Goodbye. And what a catch by the man in the second row. Boy, we had a perfect angle to watch that thing go out of here. He smoked it. Deep left center field and a nice catch by the fan. Way out near the light standard. That was a rocket. Up over the 379 foot marker, and that's 37 <laughs> feet to the top of that wall. And Torino's about two rows deep, and that thing had some elevation on it. Now Torino's with his fourth home run of the year. The Rangers take a two to nothing lead. Now Tommy Field takes strike one. A lot of times you'll see a ball down at the bottom of the strike zone like that, and the hitter will take it and then kind of look like he thought the ball was low when he looks at the umpire funny. There's an example of that pitch at the bottom of the strike zone. Golfed out of here about 400 feet. Two balls and a strike to Tommy Field. The Rangers now 39 home runs as a team. Torino's with four up. Three and one. Tommy Field hitting the ninth slot. He's trying to get a board for the top of the order. Shin Su Chu will follow. Tommy uh, starting his eighth ball game in the nine games that he has been with the Rangers. Called up a, a week ago Monday. He's hit safely in five of the previous seven starts that he's made. Joe Kelly with the payoff pitch. Call strike three. Got the outside corner and got the call. That is out number one. Well, folks, the uh, Texas Rangers and Fox Sports Southwest are planning special games to honor local universities. The next university day is for the Aggies. That's coming up on Thursday, May 28th. A university day ticket includes exciting Rangers baseball, and a Texas Rangers cap in your school's colors. Visit TexasRangers.com slash U-Days to get your tickets and see a lineup of the University Days this season. Shinsu Chu struck out as he let off the game for the Rangers tonight. Finds himself now down on the count, nothing and two in this at bat. Chu had a one for five in last night's ball game. He's trailed off. He was extremely hot. Had that 14-game hitting streak. He has uh, come off of that a little bit. Four for his last 18 times to the plate. He is still, as Tom told you in our opening remarks, is still going to have a great job of uh, rebounding from a very difficult month of April. And our third leaderboard shows you the Rebound of Shinsu Chu along with teammate Prince Fielder. 26 hits for each of them. Jason Kiptis going completely crazy for the Indians. Leading in the American League. That's deflected by Kelly off his bare hand. Over to the shortstop, Bogarts, who uh, gets the out at first. And you have to take a look at Joe Kelly. He reached out instinctively and uh, took that ball. It looks like he's looking at his wrist. I thought he got him on his hand, but... It was a little more than a glancing blow, too, Buzz, because it was redirected to shortstop for sure. Oh, yeah, forearm, bad idea. Got him on the uh, either wrist or, or lower part of the forearm, and good thing is it didn't get his fingers. That that can make your fingers. You get that off the finger, it make you go numb for a while. Yeah. He's going to take a couple of tosses and see if he can. And stay in the ball game. It was a pretty hard hit ball too. It was a sinker down and away. Shinsu hit it well, and it was definitely headed up the middle for a base hit if he didn't deflect it. So he got an out because of it. 
Looks like he'd be able to stay in the game. Yeah, it looks, looks like, like he's okay. okay. Kevin Brown used to do that all the time. The guys are so competitive, you know you can't spin around with your glove to catch it. You have a pretty good idea. It's headed up the middle for a base hit. And to keep that from happening, you're willing to stick your arm out, your hand out, to try to catch it. Even though, in hindsight, you probably wouldn't do it. So, Joe Kelly is going to stay in the ball game. Now he will face the liner to Shields with the bases empty and two away. The Shields hit the ball very solidly his first time up, and Mike Napoli able to deflect it over to Pedroia for the out. The liner not, uh, not hitting him good luck his first time. Take strike one here. The Shields a 263 average. Kelly comes back with that slider. And it evens the count at one and one. Delano in a little bit of a downturn of late. One for his last 12 in the last four games. But we go back over the longer haul. He's hit 366 over the last eight ball games and he's had a plate appearance. Seen his batting average rise. A little bit over 100 points. And it seems like every time he's gotten on, he's done something to spark a, the Ranger offense a bit. In those eight ball games that I was just speaking of, he scored nine runs. Two and two the count. Count is full. The thing that Delino has done for his little experience that he has at the big league level he certainly has shown his ability to take walks now the payoff pitch on the way low ball four and there is a walk so to shields the first two outs Prince Fielder coming up right now let's send it back to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break All right, Dana, thank you. Yeah, that is a hot ball club down there at Minute Maid Park. My goodness. It's interesting when you look at look at the defensive alignment for the Red Sox and compare it to what some other teams do. There's been teams that take their third baseman and move them to the other side of second base. The Red Sox shade him to pull, but they don't really put on an all-out shift. Third baseman is way over toward shortstop, but sometimes there's only one defensive player on the left side of the infield. The Red Sox have two. Down and in, two balls and no strikes. That's because of how many balls Prince has hit that way. First inning, he hit one right straight at the third baseman. And you would figure if they're going to defend him like that, he get a good overhead view that he would see mostly fastballs away. That they would probably stay out there. Breaking ball would be the pitch they'd come in on. See if they'd get him off speed. But uh, you wouldn't see, you, you probably wouldn't see too many fastballs in the inner part of the plate. Yeah, and in this ballpark, I think that way it works to his advantage I, because, I, yeah. you know, he can go the other way with that pitch and doesn't have to hit it very far here. I think you're right. A hand of the count here, 2-0. Oh. So I are setting that target inside. And they jammed him that time. Fielder, little pop foul is going to reach the seats. And I would bet on our pitch tracker that that was a pretty well executed fastball that was off the plate and up a bit and we'll take a look at that yeah, on the plate but up oh, two and one the shields getting a pretty good lead now at first Outside three balls in a strike. Now fielder trying to get aboard to join the liner to shields. Adrian Beltre waits in that on deck circle. Rangers leading two nothing. Robinson Chirinos led this third inning off with a home run. Just trying to get some two out magic going. That will fill the count and now. The line of the shields will be moving with the next pitch to fielder. And that last
fast pitch. Prince would love to have that number five back there. The Shields on the move. 3-2. That's rifled to left field. Ramirez going back. He has it right as he steps onto the warning track. No, oh, that'll do it. The Rangers do get on the board. Robinson Torinos with a leadoff home run. We'll go to the bottom of the third here at Fenway Park. It's the Rangers 2, the Red Sox nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Now the Rangers on top 2-0 as Phil Klein heads back out to start the third. Xander Bogarts will lead things off for Boston. And Phil pops in strike one. That's for Phil Klein is 28th pitch of the night. 20 strikes. And Phil filling up that strike zone this evening. Bogarts a 260 hitter. Beltre. Kind of played an in-between hop. A low throw dug out nicely on the short hop by Mitch Moreland. I just think he was off the base, I think. It always looks to the naked eye like the first baseman takes his foot off the bag too soon. And generally, when you see it again in replay, it's on there long enough. That's it. It's on there to me. Yep. And John Farrell, the uh, skipper of the Red Sox. Came out of the dugout to pass the top step just for a minute and then got the word from down below. No, well, there's no sense challenging that. That must be the third or fourth time in the last three games that Mitch has picked a fairly tough hop yeah. from an infielder and saved them an error. He has really gotten good at that that part of uh, playing first base. He's got good hands. Now Blake Swihart, the number nine hitter. Strike one the count. Swihart, 163. He's a switch hitter. 23 year old catcher for the Boston Red Sox and there was a lot of angst about uh, whether to promote him or not. He needed more seasoning in the minor leagues and the Red Sox finally made the decision in early May to bring him on up. Good change up. Really nice change up. One and two. That's why I came up to bat last night against Keone Kella. After Kelly thrown about five straight 95 plus fastballs, saw slider and a couple of changeups and struck out, wondered where the fastball was. <laughs> <laughs> Loops that one down the left side. That will be back into the seats. 
Still a ball and two strikes. Now take a look at our uh, Kubota power stats for tonight. We were talking about Phil Klein. How about these numbers? 23 major league appearances prior to tonight. All in relief. A 186 opponent's average. Righties hit 094. The average better than a strikeout per inning. Up the middle. That's into center field. The base hit looked like another changeup that he kind of left out over the middle of the plate. And Swihart made him pay for it. A changeup that ends up high like that. Even if you're slightly fooled, you have a pretty good chance to get the bat on it. That one's up and out over the plate. The one that's maybe in the same location as far as the outside corner goes, but a foot and a half lower. That's the one you miss. That's why hard aboard with the second base hit of the night off line. Now back to the top of the order. Mookie Betts hit the ball hard his first time, but Leonis Martin and deepest left center field ran it down. Well, Leonis is not playing quite as far over in right center field now. He's playing pretty much straight away. That's now at 226. Rangers looking for that round ball at an infield. That's almost the identical <laughs> spot, but this time Leonis able just to take a few steps to his right and haul that in. Yep, hit pretty much just as hard, maybe not quite as far, but same general direction. But because Leonis, you can see him, is on the left side of second base now before he was over in right center field. Probably 10 or 15 steps difference between where he started off the first time. Two well hit balls by Betts, and all he has to show for it is an 0 for 2. A couple of hang with him. Yep, hang in there, big guy. <laughs> uh, two outs now, and Dustin Pedroia, who struck out swinging his first time, will face Klein. One ball, no strikes. Pedroia. Moving up the list all time of the Red Sox greats. Klein's 1 0 pitch to him. 2 0. And uh, Torino's going to go out and have a, a little chat with uh, Phil Klein. Talking about Petroya. He's leading the Red Sox this year in several offensive categories, most hits. Also in walks, multi hit games, and he's third in home runs with five. That's only one behind, or five behind the four behind the leader. All time, he's 15th in games, uh, 15th in average, just under 300. And he pops this one up. Adrian Beltre fighting the breeze right at the bag, a third. And he makes the catch just in fair territory. No runs a hit, one left. We finished three in Boston. Rangers two, Red Sox nothing.
Fenway Park. This is a Rangers destination trip, which means there are a healthy number of Texas Rangers fans on hand, about 80 or so that made the trip as a group. And among those, Kelly and John Mayo, who were recently married and spent their, are spending, look at that, you're already good luck, base hit. Good, good luck charm, because it is your honeymoon. Uh, why did you decide to uh, make this your honeymoon? Well, uh, we love baseball. We love the Rangers, uh, first and foremost. And uh, we have one of our goals whenever we got married was to visit all uh, the baseball parks um, in Major League Baseball. And so we've been to a couple of different ones, but uh, Wrigley and, uh, and Fenway were definitely on the bucket list. And so we just we wanted to spend our honeymoon here. We and couldn't Ke think of a better way. And Kelly, part of the, the trip is the fact that you get a Q&A, meet and greet with Elvis Andrews, take pictures. Um, sign autographs, hear him talk. What was that like today? Awesome. He is the sweetest, nicest guy. I liked him before. I love him now. What do you like about this team and what they do um, as far as the destination trip? What else have you guys gotten to do besides the thing with Elvis today? Oh, the destinations is awesome. Um, everything is first class. Everything's planned out. Uh, get to meet and greet a Rangers player, autographs, pictures, uh, do the tour of the ballpark that you're going to. So, I mean, it was it's basically a dream come true for us. And, I mean, we... We couldn't think of a better honeymoon to, to do than at Fenway Park with the Rangers. This is the first of five this year. Guys, if you want more information, texasrangers.com slash destinations. But right now I want you guys to show the special uh, shirts that you guys had made. As they take off their shirts. Mr. Mayo and Mrs. Mayo, they were married on May 9th. How cool is that, you guys? <laughs> wow. That's I'm, very and I'm cool. going to end this interview in, in honor of Jim Knox with a, a good day, mate. Okay. Good day. <laughs> good day, mate. Jim Knox, would that make us the progressive fans of the game? Not, not exactly, but, but good day anyway. There you go. That's funny. Well, Mitch Moreland grounds into a 4 6 3 double play. So, uh, Joe Kelly got the two ball going. And the bases are now empty with two away for Elvis Andrews. You know, Buzz, any time you start to take baseball for granted, you know, we've been in it for so long, we've seen so many games. Any time you start to think, well, here we go, another ball game, when you see kids like that and what it means to them coming to the ballpark, it reminds you yep. of how lucky we are. Sure does. And how special baseball is in, you know, in the United States. Yeah, I mean, the lives just, of yeah. everyday people. That's right. Yep. Elvis had a sacrifice fly, more accurately, a sacrifice line drive his first time up. Drove in his 11th run of the year. Got the Rangers on the board in the second. One ball, one strike here. Oh, and Elvis, it's a rope right up the middle. That's over to cut it off. Elvis aboard with a solid base hit to center field. That's two well hit balls by Elvis. The sacrifice fly that he hit to right field was hit on a line right straight to Nava. And this ball, he, he gets a great pitch to hit. Looks like a cut fastball or a slider right in the middle of the plate. And he puts a perfect swing on it and rips it up the middle. Well, the Rangers now with five base hits against Joe Kelly. Elvis at first. We'll see if he... Uh, Tries to get himself in a scoring position. Leonis Martin at the plate. Ball one. Martin reached on a fielder's choice and was promptly picked off first by uh, Blake Swihart, the catcher. That was back in the second inning. Two balls, no strikes. Leonis bothered in the last couple of weeks by that uh, sore left wrist. Causing him to miss five games on the last road trip and uh, kind of re-injured. It got jammed when he came back home and had to miss uh, four more ball games. Popped him up. Bogart's angling out. Ramirez coming on, but Bogart's making the call on the pitch. That'll do it. Rangers get a couple of hits. A double play puts a crimp in their style. One left. Three and a half in the books. Rangers by two.
brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by the Mazda 6. J.D. Power has awarded the Mazda 6 highest-ranked vehicle appeal among mid-sized cars. Red Sox coming to bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. Rangers on top, 2-0, and David Ortiz let that bat fly, fouled it straight back. <laughs> he slashed at that one, boy. He can take some pretty vicious cuts. He uh, does not get cheated very often. Ortiz, of course, homering last night. 0 for 1 tonight with a ground ball to second. Or more accurately, a ground ball to shallow right. That's where uh, Tommy Field is planted about uh, well, 50 feet or so beyond the rim of the infield. Rangers in an extreme overshift. Adrian Beltre playing in a normal shortstop spot with Ortiz up there. 1-1 one, one pitch. Two balls and a strike. Good look at the defense. And Tommy Field needs some binoculars to see the signs from where he is at out there. Bill Klein set. Wow, good changer. He's throwing three or four of those today. First time that he has worked against the Red Sox. And that's out of play. Yeah, and compare that to the change up that he missed. I think David Ortiz is probably talking to himself. Another 2 2. Tried the back door with that slider and couldn't quite get it to come in there. Three balls, two strikes. Ortiz trying to lead off the fourth. We're going to look at that last pitch. Just staying outside. Ortiz to be followed by the left fielder, Henry Ramirez. Line ready for the 3 2. Bill now 46 pitches. He has had uh, 31 strikes. Popped up. Wind has it a little bit. It's helping it back toward the diamond, but uh, Chirino's over there and stays in foul territory, in fact, in the seats. Now we'll try it again at three and two. Line out of Youngstown State in Ohio. Big right hander ready, another 3 2 pitch. Got him swinging. Went up the ladder and got Ortiz to chase. That is out number one, third strikeout for Klein. Folks, uh, Thursday, June 4th, Rangers play the last of a three game set against the White Sox. First 15,000 fans will receive a Texas Rangers yearbook. Don't miss your chance to get this annual collectible. Just visit TexasRangers.com for tickets. Ranger fans in attendance. Quite a flock of them up there where Emily was visiting the last half inning. Hanley Ramirez flied out to his counterpart in left field. Lionel well, DeShields first time up. Beltre cuts that ball off. Two gone. Well, Phil Klein really acquitting himself say, well here tonight. I said the same thing. I have to be very impressed with Phil so far. I haven't seen him use the assortment of pitches like he uses as a starting pitcher as a reliever. Usually it's mostly fastballs with an occasional slider. As a starter, we've seen maybe a couple of more sliders than normal. And 
more than an occasional changeup. He's thrown five or six really good changeups. His last starting assignment at, uh, at Round Rock was back on the 11th, so some nine days ago. And he threw 84 pitches in that outing. That only got him through four and a third. And he was through three and two thirds here, and he's still under under 50 or at right at 50. That is number 50. So very very efficient against the Red Sox tonight. Working to Mike Napoli. Knapp had a base hit to right field his first time up. Average now at 180. It's climbed uh, from 20 points in this series. That's out of play down the right side. No, no balls, two strikes. Get the inning by inning breakdown for you. That is very efficient, very consistent, and very efficient. 16 the most. And the second, a couple of 12s and 11. Trying to finish off Napoli and the fourth inning. Up the middle. Tommy Field can't get it. Napoli has his second base hit. So a two out single, and that'll bring up Daniel Nava. Nap shorten his swing a little bit, trying to make a little more contact going back through the middle. Nava, a strikeout victim in the second. 0 for 1 tonight. Now 0 for his last seven times to the plate. Nothing in one. Just looking through the Red Sox and the Ranger notes, and one interesting note is in the last six years, no team has played the Red Sox like the Rangers. The Rangers are 31 and 19 against the Red Sox. By far the best opponents, one loss record against them. And they played well and hit well in this ballpark. Yeah, the Ranger offense has showed up here the last several years. Yeah. And there was a time not too far back when uh, the Rangers couldn't get a win here no matter what. Well, if they had a lead, you just waited for something to happen. Yeah. Okay. Kind of turned that around. A lot of those years were really good years for the Red Sox, too. Klein a check of first, the 1 1 pitch. That's hit well to right field. Going back is Chu. Still going back. It's over his glove and bounces into the seats. And that saves the Rangers a run. It's a ground rule double. That means Napoli has to go back to third. Nava came within a few feet of tying this ball game with a home run. And it uh, turns out to be a blessing in disguise because that ball, if it stays in the ballpark, scores Napoli easily. There's a slider down and inside part of the play right in his wheelhouse. He hits it well. Shinsu can't quite get to it. And fortunately, he didn't have it go off his glove and stay in the park. Second and third, no harm done if you can get Brock Holt right here. Just a long double. Don't bother you a bit. Strand him out there. The Red Sox with Napoli at third now and Nava at second. Rockhole out on a nice play by Delano to Shields running right down the left field line first time. Line comes in with strike one. Hold a 303 average. Part time play. He's driven in nine. A little tardy with the swing. It's nothing and two. Saw Brock Holt last night, as we mentioned, uh, coming in for Pablo Sandoval. That was his first appearance ever against the Rangers. And this is his first start in his career against Texas. Down on the count, nothing in two. Holt 
kind of a jack of all trades for this Red Sox club. Last four starts have been made at four different positions. And Napoli at third, Nava out at second. Throw down and uh, Napoli just back with a dive. But Torino's trying to pick off the former catcher at third. Jeff Bannister comes to the top step of the dugout looking back just to make sure that if time needed to be uh, taken to look at the replay more. He would be in a position to do it. One ball, two strikes now. This one's popped up. Beltre and Andrews all slicing back, and Adrian in fair territory puts it away. And that'll do it. So the two out uh, damage is averted. Two left on will go to the fifth inning. Two nothing, Rangers. I'm sitting in the famous pesky pole seats just along the right or the first baseline and lucky to be next to some Ranger fans who got these prime seats and are signing their name on pesky's pole. Now it's called this because of Johnny Pesky who played for the Red Sox and the story goes that he hit short home runs and so they named this pole after him. Uh, there are varying degrees of the story on exactly um, the details of which are still a little sketchy, what I've learned from my research. But the bottom line is this poll is signed by everyone, basically, who sits here and even some who don't. The good news is anybody can sign it. The bad news is it gets painted over uh, after every season. So <laughs> there's a giant thick coat of yellow paint on here. So your legend will only live uh, for one season. But it's still a legend, right, guys? <laughs> it is that, him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a short-lived legend, which is right. a bit of an oxymoron, but we're going to go with it. All I can say is, Em, and Jim, no Jim Knox would shinny up to the top of Pesky's pole and sign the very top of it. Let me tell you something. I'll do a lot of things that Jim Knox will do. That is not one of them. <laughs> I don't even know that he would. I will, I will tell people good day, mate. <laughs> I will eat food on live television. I will not shimmy to the top I of don't anything. Blame you. I, I will either. sing Sweet Caroline <laughs> on live television with all of my heart. 
that's where I draw the line. I hear you. Shimmying pretty much anywhere, guys. I'm going to draw the line there. <laughs> Robinson Torrios began this inning by uh, striking out, and now Tommy Field. You know, we were in Baltimore. I think it was Baltimore a while back when a fan climbed to the top of the foul pole during the game and was sitting on top of the foul pole. Wow! In Baltimore, and obviously they couldn't get to keep the game. I mean, they couldn't play the game while he was up there. And eventually, he came down. Tommy Field chops it foul. It's one ball, two strikes. Yeah, you can't have him up there. I mean, you hit the ball and he catches it. What are you out or what? <laughs> Fair ball, foul ball. Yeah. That that takes some uh, some courage or some libations. Yeah, no, yeah I, I understand he was in the Merchant Marines and probably have done similar things like that in the past. Not climb foul balls and ball points, but it didn't look like it was a difficult assignment for him. Tommy Fields guys out. There are now two gone. And Shinsu Chu coming up for his third at bat. Chu tonight is struck out. And grounded back to the mound. He had a one hopper that went off of the forearm of Joe Kelly and ricocheted right to Xander Bogart's the shortstop. Now Chu 0 for 2. One ball, no strikes. Rangers two runs on five hits. The Red Sox no runs on four hits. Pitch skipping all the way to the backstop. Skipping rope to get out of the way. Shinsu Chu. Chu again in that leadoff spot. Boy, he has been just exactly what the doctor orders. It's uh, going up there. There's a shot. Right off of Kelly, it's knocked down, and he throws him out. Well, it's a second ball that he's hit hard, headed for the middle, that Kelly has knocked down and turned into an out. First one, Chu hit him on the forearm. This one hit him somewhere behind. He got him on the side. Man, he is a very fortunate man if he's still standing after those two rockets. So that will do it for the top of the fifth. Nothing going for the Rangers. We played half the ball game. Rangers 2, Red Sox nothing. Fox Sports Southwest. No, Phil Klein back out there for the bottom of the fifth inning now, leading 2 0. And there's a drive off the bat of Xander Bogarts, and the ballpark will not hold that one. 
That is over the monster, over the seats, and out of here. It's a two to one ball game. Andrew Bogarts with his second home run of the year. The way he hit that ball, he looked like he'd have 10 or 12 home runs this year. What a charge in that. Bogarts is only 22 years old. Spent all of last year in the big leagues at age 21. Last year he hit 240 with 12 home runs as a 21 year old, and boy, he got all of that one. I got to think that's the best ball he's hit in the big leagues. If he's hit any better than that, I don't think I want to see it. No, Ranger lead now cut in half. And, uh, Blake Swihart, the catcher, takes ball one. Swihart, a base hit to center back in the third inning. A ball and a strike. Well, the hits now are even at five. Rangers clinging to that two to one lead. And, uh, Bill Klein giving up hits to uh, three of the last four hitters he's faced. Good pitch to the outside corner. Backdoor the slider from Klein. One and two. Yeah, that wind we were talking about blowing to the <laughs> left, that didn't have any effect had on to that blow shot. About 50 miles an hour to <laughs> slow that thing down. Got him swinging. Good pitch down and in. Hard breaking ball. And that is out number one. Before we tell you about Mookie Betts, who's coming to the plate, let's send it back to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. All right, Dana, thank you. Mookie Betts at the plate for his third at bat. 0 for 2. He has uh, lined out to center field, almost identical spots, but uh, Leonis Martin adjusted his positioning after the first one, and uh, the second one was a little bit easier. Now more toward, maybe a step toward left center. That ball is up the alley. And it's being cut down by the wind enough for Leonis Martin to get over there and make the catch. Ball oh, looked pretty good coming off of Betts bat, but uh, the wind got it. Martin ran it down for out number two. And let's take a look at tonight's T-Mobile game changer. Ryan Zimmerman last year, or last night I should say, his 10th career walk-off home run as he defeated the Yankees in tenth, the 10th tenth inning last night. Second most walk-off home runs among active players. That's a lot of walk-offs. Not like he's played for 15 years either. Yeah, it's hard to get in that many walk-off situations. Yeah. And then to hit a home run to do it. That's the third time that Betts has hit the ball well to left center field with nothing to show for it. Yeah, Pedroia pops it up. Fighting the win. Mitch Moreland stays with it nicely and makes the catch. And that will do it. So the leadoff home run is all the Red Sox get in the fifth. We'll move to inning number six, 2-1 Rangers.
Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $200 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Rhonda Gilliland of Arlington. And if a Ranger hits a Grand Slam this inning, Rhonda Gilliland from Arlington will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. The liner to Shields leading things off against Joe Kelly. It'll be a tough play for Holt. Loves it nicely, throws to get the liner to Shields by a step. The way Delano can get down that uh, that line, it made it very tough for Brock Holt, but he played the ball well. Yeah, he played it just like he knew how fast Delano was getting down the line. He knows he doesn't have a whole lot of time to get rid of this ball. Rushes it over there, makes a nice play. Oh, one out, and Prince Fielder now coming up. Fielder 0 for 2 tonight. A ground ball to third, a line drive to left. One ball, no strikes. Fielder now with the 0 for 2 down to 344. You got the change up from uh, Joe Kelly. Kelly now 81 pitches tonight. Right hander back to work. Base hit to center field. That was a bullet. They're going back through the middle on Kelly. He's been hit by two of them. That one didn't come too far from him. Jinsu Chu twice has tried to knock him out of the game, literally. And Prince Fielder, if that ball had hit Kelly, he would not have gotten up from that one. No. Oh, boy. wow. That thing had, had some slicing action on it. Joe Kelly thought about sticking his hand up there. No, not, not that, on that one. one. <laughs> no. That hand might have gone with the ball. Wow. So one on, one out. Here's Adrian Beltre, who is two for two. Pair of singles tonight and a run scored. Now Adrian approaching the 270 mark, 267 right now. Boy, he's done a lot of work in the last three and a half weeks to get that average to its present 267. On a play to the right, nothing in two. Kelly's still throwing hard. The last pitch might have been his most velocity on any pitch at 97 miles an hour in his 84th pitch. Got a great arm. Yeah, the Red Sox folks are saying that when he's able to conserve a little bit, you know, not try and be a hundred percent effort on every pitch. But he really has uh, has better stuff, and he can get deeper into ball games, and we're seeing that tonight. Got something left in the tank here in the sixth inning. Beltre expanding his strike zone comes away empty. That's out number two for Kelly, his fourth strikeout. Give me that high fastball. You can see the catcher signal to Kelly. Kelly delivered it to him. Well, Fielder's still at first, and Mitch Moreland is one for two. We'll step in. Mitch had a single back in the second. Last time up in the fourth, grounded into a double play. Nothing in one. Outfield playing Moreland several steps around to the right. Mookie Betts and the center fielder are way over and toward right center. Infield, uh, maybe a step that way. Pitch with the average currently at 296. Kelly, a belt high set. Nothing in two. Swinging. The ladder, Marlin, 
and Beltre back to back strikeouts. Fielder left stranded. After five and a half, 2 1 Rangers. A quaint ballpark, the quarters relatively tight uh, in a lot of places, the camera well included, very packed here tonight, and the same can be said for the visitors' clubhouse. We took the cameras inside today and asked uh, one of the resident tall guys on the team, Kyle Blanks, to give us some perspective on just how small the visitors' clubhouse is. His head almost touches the ceiling. Pretty tight quarters, but again, so much history at this ballpark. The guys don't seem to mind. Uh, to play here, have the tight quarters. After all, we're going to New York after this where things are new and very spacious. So they're not complaining too much, fellas. <laughs> all right, Dan, thank you. Yeah, there's been about that much room since 1912. <laughs> yeah, when it opened. They'd make more if they had more. Over the last 10 or 12 years, they've done a lot to Fenway Park to spruce it up, to make it nicer. They talked for a while about trying to find a new site for a ballpark. Weren't able to do that. And they've done whatever they can to make this as fan friendly as possible. That add, added just about as many seats as they possibly can. And they still have the gem of all baseball stadiums. Those seats on top of the monster, relatively new. That's a new area down the left field line where the Ranger fans are sitting. You would have thought when they suggested a different site for a new Fenway Park that they had proposed another stamp act. It was going <laughs> to there's going to be a rebellion in Boston. Yeah, I, I guess the intrigue was that they were going to build the same park somewhere else yeah. just to have modern amenities. But you know, New Yankee Stadiums is beautiful, but it's still not it's still not the same as yeah. old Yankee Stadium. You just can't recreate the history that was in the old stadium. David Ortiz leading off the. Bottom of the sixth inning. Count is full to him. Ortiz 0 for 2. He is grounded out and struck out. It is something magical to be able to look down at the field and say, Babe Ruth stood it right there right. in the batter's box. Or so did Ted Williams. And the pitch is low. Ortiz draws the leadoff walk. First walk of the game. And Phil Klein. Putting the tying run aboard, and now Mike Maddox is going to make his way out to the mound and uh, slow things down a bit. And while we have a moment, uh, Chevron would like to remind you about tomorrow's pitching matchup right back here in Boston. Be Wandy Rodriguez at one and two mark with a good ERA of 3.86. Clay Buckholz at two and four with a 
rather high ERA for him at 493. That'll be the finale of this three game set. Majors will then see the Red Sox uh, just about 10 days later on down in uh, in Arlington. Alex Claudio loosening in a hurry in that Ranger bullpen. And you look down the line, uh, first left hander that uh, Claudio would likely be asked to face, Daniel Nava. And he's a switch hitter. Here's Hanley Ramirez now, the cleanup man. He's got Ortiz at first with nobody out. A 2-1 Ranger lead here in the sixth inning. Ramirez is fly to left and grounded to third. Oh and one. Ramirez. Ten home runs. By the 29th of April this year. In the month of May he has not or since then he has not had an RBI. That's that's hard to believe for a guy like him. He did hurt himself. Ran into the wall down the left field line. Missed a few games, but boy, you know, even think from from his uh, sick bed that he'd get a couple of RBIs just by, by reputation. Yeah. Ground ball to shortstop with a man on third, the infield back. Yeah, sneak one in some way. One ball and one strike. Hard hit, but pulled foul outside third. And the count goes to one and two. It's probably a combination of things. He's not necessarily swinging the bat that well, but the other side of it is the Red Sox aren't getting a lot of base runners like they thought they would. Not as many guys hitting for average. Still trying to gel as an offensive unit. I think the Red Sox felt going into this year with the addition of uh, Ramirez and Pablo Sandoval that they were going to have a, an offense second to none in the American League. Yeah, I, I think they thought they thought that. I think a lot of other, other people around baseball felt the same thing. Sure. What, it, what they, do they say about stocks that uh, past performance doesn't guarantee future <laughs> results? <laughs> That's right. And you never know how a lineup's going to gel. They thought that they really don't have a number one starter, maybe not the top number two starter. They had a staff full of very competent two, three, four, five kind of guys. And the rotation hasn't clicked for them either. They thought they were going to score so many runs that it really wouldn't matter. That's line to right. Chu coming on in a hurry. Slides and makes the catch. Boy, Shin Su went into his dive. Looked like a little bit early. But he was able to grab it on the way down. And that is rather tenuous out number one. Yeah, some of those balls, you dive, dive too early. You dive and reach for it. It goes right over your head. <laughs> that ball really, that was hit harder than I thought it was off the bat. It looked like a looping line drive base hit. Just kept on carrying. And fortunately, Shin Su kept on coming for it and was able to catch it. A hard hit out number one in the sixth inning. And Ortiz staying at first. Mike Napoli now, who has singled both times up there tonight. We'll step in. Napoli with the average at 187 as he faces Klein for the third time. Behind the bag at second. Beltre drops and has no play. Everybody's safe. Well, even as softly as that ball was hit, it looked like Adrian was going to be able to start the double play. Neither Ortiz nor Napoli run well. So if Adrian's able to get the ball to Tommy Field, the Rangers turn it. But Adrian could not do it. Well, that was going to be at least an easy force out at second. Adrian had a little bit of a problem yesterday on, on a pop-up near the stands and a ground ball. The ground ball actually went for a hit, but a play that generally we see Adrian make. Very unusual to see him unable to complete that throw to second base on that kind of play. The defense uh, of late uh, had been playing very, very solidly for the Rangers. And now Jeff Bannister on his way to the mound. Looks like that is probably going to do it for Phil Klein. 
80 pitches under his belt, and uh, that's just four shy of his total his last start down at AAA. So, with Daniel Nava, the scheduled hitter, they're going to go to Alex Claudio coming in out of the bullpen, and while he makes his way in, we'll take a timeout. We're back to Fenway right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. As the Texas Ranger treasure chest is the place to go for great deals or great inventory in amazing seats that are rarely available behind home plate. That's for the uh, May 29th and 30th games against these Red Sox. Just visit TexasRangers.com slash treasure chest to check out the deals today. Now Phil Klein a very very solid outing his first major league start he has done a very good job he leaves leading two to one a couple of runners on base his responsibility and he gives way to Alex Claudio left-hander coming on last time we saw Claudio was over the weekend uh, against Cleveland worked a shutout inning against the tribe on here now to face the pinch hitter Shane Victorino Nava replaced by Victorino with Ortiz at second, Napoli at first. And now Claudio wants to talk to Robinson Torinos. Victorino pinch hit in last night's ball game. Came on in the uh, seventh inning, drew a walk. Pinch hitting here in the sixth with the tying run at second, the go ahead run at first. One out and Claudio ready to go. One ball, no strikes. Victorino, a 2 12 average, a home run, three driven in. 150 Boston average, as you saw, with runners in scoring position. And that pitch low, it's two and nothing. Alex Claudio this year has inherited 11 runners. Six of them have scored. And for a guy, especially in middle relief, that's a, a critical statistic. Tell you how, uh, how well he's doing. There's a strike, two and one. A lot of times it'll dictate that a guy not be used uh, in situations where he comes into a game with runners on base. Really have them start an inning, get them a clean inning. Two balls, one strike to Victorino. <laughs> Hadn't seen that one before. No. He saw the heat, then he saw the saw the off speed pitch and just really fooled him. Slider. Robinson Torino's flashing out the series of signs. Claudio still peering in. Now Torino's 
going to go out, much to the consternation of the fans here at Fenway. Now we'll see what they come up with. Two and two with one out. Audio with that high set. Boy, Victorino just barely able to get a piece of that. Stay alive. Sixty seven mile an hour change up. Runners aboard, not great speed for the Red Sox. Ortiz at second, Napoli at first. Victorino protecting home plate. I'm not used to seeing pitches quite that slow. And even though they know he doesn't have a 90 mile an hour fastball, it's still hard to wait on it. In the back of your mind, you're still thinking he might zip that 82 mile an hour fastball in there. And if you're not ready for it, he could sneak it by you. And you don't get a whole lot of practice against pitches no. at speed, do you? No, you don't. Everybody's ready. Mike Winters, home plate umpire, says, Let's go. Another 2 2 pitch is in the offing. There was the fastball. And Victorino fouls that one off, too. Eighth pitch of the at bat will be coming up next. Side, but Reno almost leaned into it. The count is now full. But three and two with one out and two aboard. Audio ready, a check of the runners. Payoff pitch. Pulled foul. Dangerously with Victorino seeing more and more pitches. Now he's going to see 10 pitches in this at bat. A little bit easier to time that off speed pitch. He came a little closer on that one. Wasn't quite as far out in front of it. Tanner Shepard's loosening in the Ranger pen. Claudio has the sign that he wants. For the hole in the left field, a base hit. Stopping at third. David Ortiz, the bases are full of Red Sox. Rock Holt will be the hitter. Mike Maddox now out to the mound. So a 10 pitch at bat. Victorino basically wearing down Alex Claudio. Timed him and finally got one through the hole. The Ranger bullpen this year, the most used bullpen in the major leagues. As of right now, 137 and two-thirds innings have worked three or more innings, 29 of 39 games. And they're going to work three or more innings tonight, too. 15 different relievers used. That's the second most in Major League Baseball. Mike Bannix, uh, Jeff Bannister trying to find the right combination down there. And they've pretty much dissolved all the established roles for everybody. So look, we'll just go matchup by matchup, see what we can do. Well, here we go. The tying run at third. Base is full, one out, and Brock Holt takes inside for ball one. Holt has fly to left and popped to, to uh, third. 0 for 2 tonight, hitting 299. Claudio with the 1 0 pitch. 1 and 1. Slider sneaking its way in. A 
Young left-hander ready to go. One and two. You almost have to keep throwing that pitch. Going for the strikeout right here. That's a very well located slider. The first one was a strike. That one's a little bit outside and the ball. Head in the count. Going for the strikeout. Try to make him swing at the same thing. Just make sure you keep it out there. Pitch on the way. Pull just foul outside first. That one that's got a little not, bit more of the plate. That's not what he had in mind. That one was very hittable. Trying to throw it down and away. And it's down a little bit. It's away a little bit, but not quite as far as he was hoping to get it. No damage done, though. Just a little dinky foul ball. Still one and two. Holt this year against left handers. The 313 average. Got him swinging. And got him thinking about the slider away and sunk the fastball down and in for a huge strikeout. A hold down on strikes. That is out number two. And uh, it's going to bring Jeff Bannister out of the dugout. So Alex Caudio comes on to strike out Brock Holt after giving up the base hit to Shane Victorino. And Tanner Shepherds will be summoned from the Ranger bullpen to face Xander Bogarts. The base is full of Red Sox. Rangers leading two to one here in the bottom of the six. We will take another timeout. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. against the White Sox. So head on out to Globe Life Park for an early summer game and enjoy all the ballpark hot dogs you can eat for just a buck each. Visit TexasRangers.com for tickets or you can call 972 Rangers. Well, Alex Claudio doing the job. Got the strikeout, the big strikeout of Brock Holt for the second out of the inning after giving up the base hit to load the bases. Now he has turned the game over to Tanner Shepherds. Well, obviously, key part in this ball game, whether it's the ninth inning and you've got your closer in there, or whether it's the sixth inning with the bases loaded and a one run game. Just as much pressure on the pitcher to come in and throw strikes and get this big out. First pitch to yes, Bogarts sir. on the outside corner for strike one. Bogarts had a long home run his last time up. That was leading off the fifth inning. Right now, batting with the tying run at third, the go ahead run out at second. Bogarts one for three in his career against Tanner Shepherds. That's in the dirt. Nice stop by Robinson Chirinos. I'll say that was not an easy one. Robinson earning his keep on that one. Shepherds worked 
two scoreless innings against the Cleveland Indians back on Sunday. This is outside. It's two and one. Banner retired all six Indians that he faced in that ball game. Now Jeff Bannister is asking to come in here and face Bogarts with the bases full in a 2-1 game. Bogarts a 264 average as he waits. David Ortiz, the runner at third. He is trailed by Mike Napoli at second. And Shane Victorino over at first. Hit him. Fastball up and in. I got the bat. I beg your pardon. John Farrell out of the uh, dugout very quickly. He's going to make sure he sees a replay before he does anything else. Well, I can't tell from that. If it hit him, I think it would have hurt. He would have reacted to it. So it must have been what happened. Yep. His bat kind of dropped down behind him, and it looked like it hit the handle of his bat. So two and two, that's pretty fortuitous for the Rangers, I'll say. Out of play. Still two balls, two strikes. Get another look at that uh, previous pitch. Let's see if you can see this ricochet off the bat. Probably did, otherwise you would have had a reaction from Bogart. Yeah. You would have heard an audible scream or something. <laughs> Shepard's again set. Another 2-2. The center field, here comes Leonis Martinez right at it. He makes the catch, and that will do it. For the Red Sox, no runs. On one hit, they leave the bases full. We'll go to the seventh inning. Rangers two, Red Sox with one. Elvis Andrews got the Rangers started in the second inning. His sacrifice fly brought home Adrian Beltre, 1-0 Rangers. Robinson Chirinos then led off the next inning, the third, with his third home run of the make that his fourth home run of the year. It was 2-0 Rangers. Answering Xander Bogart's a long home run as he led off the fifth with that bomb. 2-1, and that's where we stand now. Rangers come to bat 
here in the seventh inning. And Elvis leading things off. Elvis one for one. Had that sack fly and a base hit. I think Kelly's throwing better now than he was at the beginning of the game. Like he's gotten loose. His fastballs now are all above 95. And that was above the bat of Elvis, and uh, it's one ball and two strikes. Shane Victorino staying in the ball game, playing in right field now. One two pitch. Two and two. He's got pretty good control, pretty good command tonight. He's a guy that walks about four batters per nine innings. He's only walked one so far in this game. And Elvis able to lean on that breaking ball. That fills the count. So Elvis. Trying to get aboard to start the Rangers seventh. Leonis Martin is in the on deck circle. And Tommy Lane that you saw loosening in the uh, Red Sox bullpen. The line drive to left. Ramirez back. Jumps up and makes the catch. That's three ropes for Elvis. One to right, one to center, and now one to straightaway left field that didn't quite get over Ramirez's head. He needed to get it up just a little bit. A hard line drive. Nice play by Ramirez. Three well hit balls for Elvis. And we remind folks that uh, Hanley Ramirez is a shortstop by trade. And this is the first uh, that he's ever played in the outfield this year with the Red Sox. Not only is it the first time he's ever played in the outfield, but it has to be in this ballpark too, which is not the easiest left field to play. Yeah, it's the kind of good and bad. The bad is you have to play the balls off the green monster, and that takes some getting used to. The good part is there's not much room out there, so you don't get overexposed like you would in a huge left field in our ballpark. You do when you go on the road. There's a fly ball well hit to left. Ramirez is going to watch this one go off the green monster. He plays the carom well, but into second, and now Martin going for three. The throw, not in time. Heads up base running. Heads up base running by Martin who hustled all the way. He played Ramirez played it off the wall. Well he saw he couldn't catch it. He played it off the wall. He went to throw it to second even though he didn't have a play. The ball slipped out of his glove. Rolled about two feet. And by the time the center fielder picked the ball up. He slid underneath the tag yep. for probably a double and an error. Yeah, Mookie Betts. Making that throw and a heads up job by Betts. And now there's going to be a challenge on the uh, call at third. Uh, John Farrell, the uh, skipper of the Red Sox, issuing that challenge. And, uh, the home plate umpire, who is the crew chief, Mike Winters, along with uh, third base umpire Mike Malinsky. Look at full speed on that uh, tag by Hope. Going to issue the challenge, so the uh, headsets will go on. And here's the overhead look. Well, they may have uh, closer than I thought. Yeah, I thought he absolutely slid under the tag. Still think he's safe, but it's a lot closer than I thought. It sure is. Well, the replay command center in New York getting the angles. They will issue a verdict. I think it's like the one last night when Elvis had the tag play at second base. It's it's close. You watch it again. You don't know exactly which way it went, but because he was called safe, probably not going to be overturned. And you're right. It is not overturned as Mike Winters gives you the safe side. So Leonis Martin at third. It'll be scored a double and an error on Handler Ramirez for not handling the uh, carom correctly. And the call is confirmed. Okay, so good. Evidence that the uh, video evidence, clear and convincing evidence that the call was correct. So that puts uh, Martina third with one out. Robinson Torino's up, and the Red Sox now play in the infield all the way in. Robinson takes strike one. Torino's has homered and struck out tonight. So it's been either the penthouse or the basement for Robinson. Right here, he's got a chance to. Extend the Ranger lead back to two runs if he can get that uh, ball into the outfield. 
One ball, one strike. Ninety-eight pitches so far for Joe Kelly. Robinson back in, hitting out of that slightly open stance as Kelly works from the stretch. In the dirt, nice job by Blake Swihart to keep that ball from going to the backstop. A lot like the one that Robinson had mm -hmm. with a man on third base. Bounced way out in front of the plate. Two and one. Kelly sets. Three and one. And Kelly has walked one tonight. That was Delano De Shields back in the third inning. John Farrell keeping a very close eye on the right hander. He's set for the 3 1 pitch. Three and two. Tough pitch, 97, right on the corner. See the catcher's glove. Yeah, almost on the corner. Not a very hittable pitch for sure. McKelly now, no doubt, will be going for the strikeout, which pretty much puts everything in play pitch selection wise. You keep that runner at third if you possibly can and get an out. Robinson Torinos being a catcher. Having to think through all that. Tommy Field waiting in the on deck circle. Kelly ready for the 3 2 pitch. Got him swing. Went up the ladder with that fastball at 96. That's his sixth strikeout. Yeah, a very big one here. Now two outs in the seventh. A Tommy Field, a strikeout, a fly ball to right tonight. Leonis Martin still at third. Ball one is high. Field with three runs driven in. A couple of home runs. They were both solo shots. Average at 231. Leonis Martin coming down the line from third. The 1 0 pitch. Is in to make it one and one. Tommy Field joined the Rangers a week ago Monday night. Kelly drops in the breaking ball, one and two. Tommy put up some uh, very good numbers down in. Round Rock, Triple A, had 13 RBI in 28 ball games and five home runs. Looking for a big one here, the one-two pitch. Hundred and six pitches for Kelly, and he's still firing it at 97 miles an hour. Martin, a double and an error got him to third. He's there now with two outs. Ball three. And whatever Kelly has left, he is uh, bringing it out here. A three and two count to Tommy Field. Shinsu Chu will follow in the order. And I doubt that uh, Kelly's going to face Chu if he loses Field. Payoff pitch. Got him swinging. 98. And Field and the Rangers are gone. They strand Leonis Martin at third. Stretch time in Fenway. 2 1 Rangers.
Our progressive Rangers upcoming schedule. One more game here in Fenway. That's tomorrow night. Then down the coast to uh, play the Yankees over the weekend. Come uh, Memorial Day, they'll be in Cleveland. Play the afternoon ball game, three with the Tribe. And then it's back home to take on these Red Sox to finish out the month of May. Tanner Shepard's back to the hill and dealing to Blake Swihart. Starting off the bottom of the seventh inning. Shepard's came on to get the final out of the sixth inning. He got a line drive to center field from Sander Bogarts to uh, take care of that Red Sox threat. Swihart fouls off another pitch. One and two. Swihart tonight, a single and two trips. That was the same pitch, the same velocity, the same movement, and the foul ball went almost in the same seat. The duplicate. Hard hit ball, but right at Elvis. One gone. And before we go back to the top of the Red Sox order, let's uh, send it on over to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. All right, Dana, thank you. Here are the Rangers with a 2-1 to one lead. Mookie Betts facing Tanner Shepard. Shepard drops in that breaking ball for strike one. Betts tonight has hit three balls to center field that you could probably throw a tarpaulin over. Cover him. Jonas Martin has uh, had him play very nicely. Jonas out there... Uh, a step and a half toward left center field. He's going the other way. That's going to drop in front of Shin Su Chu for a base hit. Well, I guess Betts figured, well, I haven't had any luck going to center. I'll take it the other way, and he does so successfully. He's made contact solidly all, all four times. Came into the game only hitting 227, but he's looked like a much better hitter than that tonight. Still a very young player, only 22 years old. Hasn't spent a lot of time in the minor leagues. Red Sox. Love him. He's kind of like the Swihart as far as a guy they won't consider trading. Let's see why. Ross uh, Ollendorf, the right hander, and Sam Freeman, the left hander in the Ranger bullpen. Here's Pedroia. Dustin 0 for 3. One ball, no strikes. Pedroia 0 for 5 in his career against Tanner Shepard. We told you last night the uh, Red Sox don't run all that much, but Betts at first, one guy that you have to keep an eye on. He's five out of six in the stolen base category. The other would be Shane Victorino. Red Sox as a team, 14 out of 19 for the year. Pedroia coming out of his shoes to <laughs> go after that pitch. That's the way he swings, boy. Yeah. He just he's, a, he's not a big guy. He holds the bat right on the bottom and swings as hard as he can at every pitch. Has amazing hand-eye coordination. And when you look at his overall numbers, he, he, he has walked in his career just about the same amount of times that he struck out. He struck out once tonight on the season. He's walked 20 times and struck out 20 times. And you would think for a guy that swings as hard as he does that he would miss more pitches, but yeah. he doesn't. Yeah, you figure that's there's no way a guy can swing that hard and make contact consistently. But yeah. he does. You're right. And it doesn't matter how hard you're throwing, he can turn it around too. One two pitch. That breaking ball just a little bit high, two and two. Gray had a little bit of a down year last year. He only hit 278 with seven homers and 53 RBIs. He's been a most valuable player in the American League. Though. That's at first as Shepherds checks him and he'll drive him back with a throw. Tanner in his second game since being recalled from Triple A. Said he had to go down there and get himself together. Just wasn't ready to get things going at the big league level. 
That's in the dirt. It gets away from Torinos all the way to the backstop. Turning second and now holding on is Betts. Now, Mookie Betts, say one thing for him. He's going to push it as far as he possibly can. He was thinking about going to third if Torinos hadn't gotten to that ball quickly. Wasn't he the one that stole second and kept right on going yep. to third, stole two bases and one? One attempt when there was the shift down and no one covering third early in the season. So he was he was thinking about the same thing right here. Going two bases on a wild pitch. He does get himself in scoring position now. It's a 3-2 count to Pedroia. Lofted to right field. Chew an easy play. Out number two. Uh, a good 3 2 pitch. It was a breaking ball down and away. Pedroia, all he could do is reach for it and tap it softly to right field. Big pitch by Tanner right there. Now you have a choice. Look at that last pitch. That was right on the outside corner. You've got first base open. David Ortiz is the plate. I don't think there's much of a choice, to be quite honest. But Not for me. I've seen B I, Big Poppy's made a believer out of us. Yep. First base open, even though you have Hanley Ramirez, also a very quality hitter. Now the Rangers are going to go ahead and walk him. They're not going to take a chance on Ortiz. And I think that's the better part of Valor right there. Not popular with the Red Sox faithful, but you can understand that. They want to see Big Poppy hit. And the How bad she is. Look at her. She's so mad she can't stand it. <laughs> That's funny. She, she, the she came to watch Big Poppy hit, yep. and she is mad. I think she understands, though. Deep down, she's probably a baseball fan. Well, the intentional pass that puts runners at first and second with two outs. Andy Ramirez. Will be the hitter, and Mike Maddox out very quickly to the mound. They'll go over with Tanner Shepherds and Robinson Chirinos, exactly what they had discussed with Ramirez prior to the ball game. A little refresher course on uh, the scouting report. Hanley Ramirez tonight has flied to left, grounded to third, and the line to right field. Got the tying run out at second base, the go ahead run at first. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ramirez with those numbers in April, 293, 10 home runs, 22 RBI. In May, 250 with no home runs and no RBI. And Shepard's going right after him with that fastball inside for strike one. Hits are even at seven. Rangers have the advantage by one in the run column. Two to one, Texas. 0 1 pitch. One ball and one strike. Mookie Betts out at second base. He's the tying run. Go ahead, run over at first. David Ortiz. Anthony Ramirez waiting at home plate. Right wow. at Tommy Field That's Station to step to the right at second base. And that will do it. That's some positioning, Buzz. That is exactly right. That's about as Sure, a base hit up the middle as you'll ever see. Can't hit it much harder than that. And the Rangers strand a couple. will go to the eighth inning. It remains the Rangers two and the Red Sox one.
MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Now 30-year-old Tommy Lane enters the ball game and uh, here in the eighth inning dealing to Shinsu Chu. And this is the reason the Rangers still have a <laughs> two-to-one lead. That's positioning at the highest level right there. That looked like a routine hit right up the middle. Red Lane. Sox have hit some balls hard. They, they, they have. have people in this they game. Have. A lot of hang with them. Yep. Tommy Lane, 30-year-old from the uh, St. Louis area. Signed by the Red Sox as a minor league free agent. Chu lines one to left. <laughs> I can't believe the last three at bats for Chu. He is he's hit the ball just like Ramirez hit that ball. Two off the pitcher, and this one a slicing rope right to Ramirez in left field. Both teams have hit a lot of balls hard tonight. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a two to one game when you look back at all the balls that have been hit right on the nose. Most of them have been caught. No, one hard out. Here's Delano to Shields, who's 0 for 2. Had a walk back in the, the third inning. He's hit the ball hard. And he almost walked right into that pit. Let's see you bunt that one. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Lane firing a pitch down and in to Delano. So Delano's already starting toward first base. He's anticipating, hoping for a pitch outside so you can get your momentum going toward first base and then just bunt it. It's harder to get any momentum going if the ball's inside. There's one by the dive of Holt down the left field line. And the Shields will turn that into a double, even though Ramirez gets to it quickly. Oh, the line out. Saying, well, I better not bunt, so I'll just uh, turn one around and get a two-bagger out of him. He yeah. does that. And that's one of the benefits of being able to run and being able to bunt is the third baseman has to respect that. And look how far in he is. He doesn't have time to react to the ball that's hit right by him. If you don't play in like that, then he'll bunt. If you play back, if you play back, he'll bunt. If you play in, you can't react to a hard hit ground ball quite as not quite as easily. So the Shields now in scoring position for Prince Fielder. Fielder one for three tonight. A single in the sixth inning. Fielder the team leader with 23 runs driven in. Is trying to add on to their 2 1 lead that they have here in the eighth inning. One ball, no strikes. Tommy Lane, who took over for Joe Kelly after the seventh inning. Originally, Lane was the property of the Arizona Diamondbacks, signed with them in 2007 out of Mount Olive College in North Carolina. We went over to the San Diego Padres in a purchase deal in 2012. And signed by the Red Sox prior to last year. Minor league free agent. It was in 30 ball games last year for Boston. Low one outside. And it's a three ball no strike count now to Prince Fielder. Fielder getting third to be followed by Adrian Beltre. See if Prince has the green light to turn one loose here. I would think he does. Three and one. Right at the upper inside extent of the strike zone. Lane ready, a check of second. Good sinking fastball. And it's a full count. Like Lane kind of crossfires left handers too, the way that Wade Miley did last night. Left hander okay is the sign. And misses inside ball four. Oh, that puts runners at first and second. Adrian Beltre coming up. He will not face Tommy Lane. As John Farrell 
out to the mound. He has signaled he wants the right-hander. That would be Janichi Tazawa to come in and face Beltre. So uh, another pitching change here at Fenway. We will take a timeout. Rangers leading 2-1 to one here in the eighth inning. We're back right after this. Then at 6 p.m., it's the return of Baseball Night in America on Fox. Cardinals and Royals renew their in-state rivalry. Your home for baseball every Saturday is Fox and Fox Sports 1. Now, Janichi Tazawa, who we saw in last night's ball game, brought in here to face Adrian Beltre with runners at first and second and one out in the eighth inning. Rangers trying to add on to their... Uh, Two to one advantage. Tazawa worked the eighth inning last night. The first hitter he faced, Adrian Beltre, who struck out. Adam Rosales has come off the Ranger bench to pinch run for Prince Field. Rosales in the ball game at first base. Beltre two for three tonight. Singled his first two times up and struck out his last time in the sixth inning. Strike one with a fastball. Tazawa, that mid 90s fastball, and a good splitter. Beltre at 265. That is good speed on the base pass. Tazawa's going to try and get to Shields, but Pedroia almost acting like a first baseman holding to Shields on second out there. Quick move, good throw. Close play. Quick tag, too. Yep. I'm not sure I've seen Pedroia do anything that wasn't quick. No. Runners on the move. The pitch is high. The throw is wide. A double steal. Oh, that ball almost went down the left field line, too. It did. Holt made a nice play and a wild throw. Tazawa has a fairly big leg kick and takes a little bit of time to deliver the ball to the plate. Pretty easy pickings for the base runners. So the double steal gets Rangers at second and third. 11 stolen base of the year for Delino to Shields. He was the front man in that double steal. One ball, one strike to Beltre. Infield pulled all the way in. And trying to elevate it. Couldn't quite get on top of that pitch. It's one and two. There's times where Adrian is just so anxious to hit the ball that he expands his strike zone on those high pitches a little bit farther than he can actually make contact. Now Tazawa checking the runners. 
And Adrian going up the ladder even further. He has gone on strikes, two away. Well, the infield now back at normal depth with two outs. Mitch Moreland, one for three tonight. And Carl Willis, the uh, pitching coach, is going to head out to the mound and uh, talk to Tazawa and the entire infield. Willis just took over as pitching coach uh, recently for the Red Sox. He's had. Uh, Several big league jobs over the years. Well respected around Major League Baseball. And of course, John Farrell, who was the pitching coach here for a number of years. Juan Nieves had been the pitching coach, but he was relieved of duties uh, at the end of April. Well, here we go with Mitch Moreland up there. Right off the end of the bat, that may spin back fair. And uh, Brock Holt making sure it doesn't. Had enough English on it. <laughs> been, been given the opportunity to hit the rim of that grass, it might have kicked back toward the foul line. See that ball spinning off to the side. Also got a cut out of the. Uh, he hit it right off the right off the cup part of the bat. Took a chip out of it. That's the kind of ball a pitcher would love to have one, at least one pitch with. <laughs> All in one, the count. Another one, same spot. Oh, and two. Mitch trying to figure out a way to get the ball into the outfield, get a base hit, and score at least one, if not two runs for the Rangers. Mitch did a pretty good job with runners in scoring position. He's got the Shields at third, Rosales at second. The 0 2 pitch from Tazawa. Got him swinging. Tazawa comes on and strikes out both Beltre and Morland. Rangers get a couple on with a hit and a walk, but leave them stranded after seven and a half. Two to one, Texas.
Rangers who lead the Red Sox by a score of two to one. The finale of this three-game series here at Fenway Park takes place tomorrow. Same game time, same game channel right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Things get going at 6 o'clock with a first pitch at 6.10 local time. Prince Fielder, or Adrian Beltre, I should say, and Big Poppy looking to continue hitting the long balls. And, of course, all of this wonderful information. And you're welcome for not singing Sweet Caroline tonight, <laughs> courtesy of AT&T. Uh, and that was so delightful last night. I think there ought to be a uh, an encore performance. I mean, you can only... I just feel like anything else would taint my original performance. Can't recreate the No, the, the magic original. of last night. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll defer and to And I got a judgment. lot of complaints about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ross Ollendorf out of the uh, Ranger bullpen taking over here in the eighth inning. Dealing to Mike Napoli and Ollendorf fires a strike to the outside corner. It is one and one. Napoli two for three tonight. Ollendorf in Lockhart, Texas. Big right-hander. He goes 6'4", about 240 pounds. And he deals the breaking ball on the outside corner. <laughs> Matt talking to himself. That was the last pitch. Borderline pitches. Calls went against Napoli. They went in Ross's direction. Good fastball and a hard breaking ball. You see them right on top of each other. Right next to the outside corner. Ross into that exaggerated windup. And Napoli pops one foul back into the seats. One more shout out, Buzz. Reg and Lauren Grant are here. They're from Garland, Texas. Celebrating Lauren's birthday tomorrow. They also sent up a couple of batches of peanut butter cookies. Thank you very much for cooking those. We do appreciate that. We'll have those to the rest of tonight and tomorrow. Thank you very much. And happy birthday tomorrow, Lauren. A little bit low, Napoli able to check his swing. Two balls, two strikes. Ollendorf on Sunday, his first outing of the year. He and uh, Tanner Shepherds called up from uh, Round Rock at the same time. Both got into the game the day they arrived in Arlington. Ross, a 32 year old. He has. Uh, Traveled around the major leagues a bit. 2-2 pitch. Down the right field line. It is slicing. Chu over near the railing of the low wall down there. Makes the catch just in fair territory. So you run out of room pretty quickly down that right field line. Nice job by Chu to stay with it. He gets under control and gets there in time. So he's not sprinting right to the wall. Kind of has time to slow down, take a couple of quick steps, keep his eye on the ball, and make the play. The one away, and Shane Victorino comes up for his second at bat. Victorino entered the game as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning and had a base hit. At the time, it uh, it loaded the bases with just one out. With the Rangers with. Uh, Combination of Alex Claudio and Tanner Shepard is able to wiggle off the hook on that one. Maintain that 2 1 lead. That's where it stands now in the bottom of the eighth inning. 1 0 pitch. That will even the count. Oh for 7 is Shane Victorino against Ross Ollendorf. Inside corner. One and two. Good fastball by Ross, 95 miles an hour. Ollendorf made his major league debut back in 2007 with the Yankees. Two balls, two strikes. Worked in 25 games in the out of the Yankee bullpen in 2008, then went over to Pittsburgh. 2011 ball games with the Pirates as a starter in 2009. 
Went over to San Diego in 2012 and on to the Nationals in 2013. That ball is hit well to left field. They have to play it off the wall. The Shields plays it perfectly. They're going to hold Victorino to a single. Well, there's where the uh, monster taketh away. Would have been extra bases in most places. But not here tonight with that big wall out there. Well played by Delano. Knew he couldn't catch it. Packed up in time so that he was in position to catch the carom. Carom. And he was wheeled and fired. Victorino took a big turn, realized I don't really have a good chance to get to second base on that hard hit ball. That's one if you get too close to the wall, it's going to bounce right by you for yeah. an easy double. So he played it nicely. Well, Victorino, who has good speed now, he has three stolen bases this year for well, the Red Sox, three for three for three in that department. He's at first with one out. Brock Holt is at the plate. And, uh, Ollendorf fires strike one. Holt has flied out, popped out, and struck out. One home run, nine driven in for Holt. One and one. Ollendorf does a pretty good job holding runners and then uh, quickening his motion to home plate. He Gets rid of all the extra motion and uh, the high knee knee lift. More of a glide step toward home plate. It's the foul ball to make it one and two. team with eight base hits tonight. Victorino the tying run at first with one out here in the bottom of the eighth. The busted bat foul ball. Holt will have to go back for some new lumbers. That ball ended up back in the fourth row behind home plate. Okay, you're going to throw it in, get it in there, and he sure got it in there on Holt that time. Holt normally has a, a little bit of an open stance. He might be a little more open after getting jammed <laughs> in that last he might bit. Back up off the plate a couple <laughs> inches too. He's right on top of the plate. I think his hands are hanging over the plate. Double play ground ball in the field. To Elvis, that's all they're going to get with Holt running. Not much they could do unless you happen to turn it over very quickly. But they do get the lead man, Victorino. For the second out, Xander Bogart's coming up. Tommy had to make sure he had the ball and got that lead runner. Great to turn two, but it took a little tricky hop on him. The big thing is get that one out. Elvis just making sure he gets out of the way. He knew he had didn't have any chance to turn a double play. Victorino was going to have a great chance to break it up. And even if Elvis wanted to throw it, Victorino was going to make it tough for him. So Holt at first now. Two gone. Bogers tonight is one for three with a solo home run. Trying to take that ball the other way and swung through the Ollendorf offering. It is nothing and one. Bogarts with the leadoff home run in the fifth inning. Made it completely out of Fenway. Across the street onto the rooftops. Infield pulling around to the left. Good breaking ball. Ollendorf now with an 0-2 advantage in the count. Bogart's taking a little time getting back in and Jeff Bannister doing a little uh, skippering from the Ranger dugout. Got him swinging in the dirt and Chirinos will have to fire on to first and that's how 
the bottom of the eighth comes to a close. No runs a hit, one left. We're going to the ninth in Fenway. It's the Rangers two and the Red Sox one. On top, two to one, as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Yeah, let's take a look at our uh, DraftKings players to watch tonight. Jared Weaver, seven innings of work tonight for the Angels. Ian Kinsler with the Tigers, one for four with a double. Elvis Andrews, a good night here tonight, one for two with a sack fly. And Chris Bryant of the Cubbies. Later on against San Diego, 423 in, a last, in the eight game hit streak that he has going. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code DTOWN. Top of the ninth inning, and Matt Barnes, 24-year-old right-hander, is on the hill now for the Red Sox. Barnes, a former first-round pick of the Sox back in the 2011 draft at the University of Connecticut. Dealing to Elvis Andrews for strike one. Elvis, a sacrifice fly in the second inning. Got the Rangers scoring started. Singled in the, eighth, the fourth inning. And line to left, Hit the ball right on the nose in the seventh, and came up with nothing to show for it. Sean Thomason loosening in the Ranger bullpen. Out of play to the right, it's a ball and two strikes. And we saw Neffy in the sixth inning, I think it was last night. Jeff Bannister has said there really is not a defined role in the bullpen. Show up, be ready to pitch. And right now, at least tonight, Sean's going to get the opportunity to save this ball game. That's the kind of thing you would hope you would have it settled coming out of spring training, but what the Rangers felt was settled it turned out to not be. Yep, performance matters. It sure does. 2-2 pitch. Elvis shoots one down the right side. That slices back into the crowd. And we'll come back and try it again. Rangers have seen some heat tonight from the right-handers. Joe Kelly, the starter, was throwing 98 miles an hour in the 106th pitch he threw tonight. Junichi Tozawa was 94-95, and now Barnes is over 95. Hard-throwing righties for the Red Sox tonight. Trying to change it. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Elvis gone. Now Leonis Martin will come up. Barnes came up uh, 
for the first time to the major leagues last year with the Red Sox. Had five ball games. Just worked a total of nine innings. Leonis trying to bunt and bunts through it for strike one. Matt Barnes, uh, a starting pitcher throughout his minor league career. Fly ball to right. Victorina started back. Now has to come on. He's there in plenty of time to make the grab. That's out number two. Next will be Robinson Chirinos. The Barnes getting uh, his feet wet last year and Red Sox trying to do the same with him this year and uh, maybe working back into a starting rotation, a starting spot. Chirinos tonight, the leadoff home run in the third inning, and so far that has been the difference in the game. Hits this one well to right center, but Victorino got a great read on it and makes a running catch in the alley. That'll do it. Rangers out in order. We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Rangers leading 2-1 to one on Fox Sports Southwest. Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By AT&T, UVerse TV. UVerse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by the Ford Memorial Day EcoBoost sales event. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. the bottom of the ninth has arrived at Fenway Park and Sean Tolleson has entered the ball game see if he can close this out for the Rangers Tolleson in his 18th ball game he has six holes to his credit 363 earned run average and a 258 opponents batting average Tolleson will face the number nine man Blake Swihart to start things off then back to the top of the order and the important thing is Phil Klein looking to get his first win as a starter at the major league level. If he has a 1 2 3 inning, you don't have to worry about David Ortiz till tomorrow. And that's probably what you're looking at in a one run game as the importance. No doubt about it. The Rangers had a couple of men on third base, one out opportunities late in the ball game and didn't cash in. They had a chance to add some insurance, so Sean will have to deal with this one run ball game. Fires a strike to Swihart. It's one ball and one strike. Swihart had a single in the third inning. Since then, is struck out and grounded a short. Pulled the string and had Swihart way out in front. Swihart seen some good changeups in this series so far. 
And fastball all the way right there. Collison nods in agreement and sets the one two pitch. Weakly tapped out to second. Tommy Field has that. That is out number one. Two good changeups back to back. After getting ahead in the count with his fastball, got Swihart to reach and just tap that little ground ball to second. Nice to get the first out of the inning. Pets has swung the bat extremely well tonight. Three hard hit outs and a hard hit base hit as well. Well, Mookie bats one for four. That batting average. Covering right at the uh, 228 level. Jeff Bannister and Kevin Harmon, the uh, Ranger trainer, discussing things over there on the Ranger bench. 1 0 pitch. Now two balls and no strikes. That single came back in the seventh inning. He advanced the second on a wild pitch, but the Red Sox could not get him in. Two and one. Collison's next pitch. That's lined to right center field. That is cut off by Chu, but into second with his speed. Mookie Betts has a two bagger. And the Red Sox have the tying run in scoring position with one out. Man, I don't know how Mookie Betts was hit 227 coming into this game. He's hit five ropes. This ball caught the center of the plate. And he caught the center of the diamond. Shot this to right center field. Shinsu got over and cut it off, but just didn't have the time to turn around and make any kind of a throw to keep Betts from going to second. Now Sean really has his work cut out for him because he has to face the middle of the lineup. Pedroia, Ortiz, Ramirez. You know, one run game. Yeah, unless you can figure out some way to get a line drive double play, you're going to have to. They said least Ortiz. But first things first, here's Pedroia, 0 for 4. Ball one. Pedroia has twice popped out tonight. He's also flied out and struck out. Hitting 273 for the year. Ranger bench hoping that John Tollison can close this thing out. Jump. And that is in to even the count. You know, Sean Tollison showing you more and more confidence in that changeup. It's been a, a very much a very effective weapon against left-handers, and now he is using it against right-handers to great effect. Just missed the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Pedroia 0 for 1 against Sean Tollison in previous matchups. 0 for 1 with one walk. Good off speed pitch. Pedroia is so anxious with a man on second base in a one run game that he chased that changeup. Way out of the strike zone. Had the same kind of swing that Swihart had it. The strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Mookie bets the tying run out there at second base. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. Tollison facing Pedroia. My ball left field going back the Shields. He reaches up, makes the catch. Betts tags at second, thinks about going to third. They try to throw behind him. 
but he gets back in time. Nice play by Delino to Shields. Playing relatively shallow, he had to go back in a hurry and caught up with that ball right at the scoreboard. That's Betts almost got a little careless. Not much to be gained by going to third base with two outs. And Elvis turns and fires it to second. Makes it a fairly close play. I know concentrating all the way up against the wall. Makes the play. Now you can pitch around Ortiz. Last time they pitched around Ortiz, they walked him intentionally. Ramirez had a bullet up the middle. Yeah. But Tommy Fields was shading up the middle and was right there to catch it. And they'll try the same thing right here. She just does not like the intentional walk. <laughs> She's pretty adamant about a that too. Pleasant looking lady that gets so upset with the intention of walk. <laughs> I wish I knew what she was saying. <laughs> it's not a birthday greeting. I don't <laughs> guarantee you that. I don't think it is. <laughs> she said she got to do it back to back at bats yep. for Big Poppy. He walked, then he walked intentionally, and now he's walked intentionally again. And now Mike Maddox is going to come out and uh, visit with John Tollison and Robinson Torinos about uh, Anley Ramirez. Yeah, in the same situation that Tanner Shepard's had. When he got to Ramirez to hit that line drive that Tom was telling you about, that was back in the seventh inning. Now an almost identical situation with First and second, two outs, but this is the bottom of the ninth inning. Rangers leading two to one. The Red Sox have not hit the Rangers tonight, nine to eight. And here is that at bat in the seventh inning against Santa Shepherds. He even had a little slice on it right over to Tommy. And uh, Anthony Ramirez said that's the bat's fault. I did my job. The bat let me down. That just directed it right straight to the second baseman. Got another chance right here. Sean's going to try to figure out a way to make this the last batter of the ball game. Well, Ramirez will step in 0 for 4 tonight. The last two times up, that line drive to second. He's also lined out to right field. Tying run at second, winning run at first. And strike one from Sean Tollison. I don't blame him for not liking it, but I don't blame the umpire for calling it a strike either. Anthony Ramirez this year in the ninth inning has gone five for 11 with two home runs. I will remind you, he has not had an RBI since the 29th of April. Ooh, he sure threw it right where he wanted to. A little bit inside. Yeah. Good call. But that was still right where he wanted to. Yeah, still right where he wanted yeah. it. Hoping he swung at it and got jammed. A ball and a strike. Tollison, ready to work. Breaking ball, and he couldn't tempt Ramirez at going after it. Two and one. Red Sox faithful uh, nervously anticipating what's going to happen. The uh, rally caps out for the Boston faithful. Two balls, one strike. Two on with one out, not time called. And Ramirez, a 268 average. One of the uh, Red Sox imported players that they have relied so heavily on. Collison ready to work to him. Tommy Field right there again. He will take it to the bag. Another and hurt. that is a winner. And the Ramirez in identical situations in the seventh and the bottom of the ninth. Tommy Fields getting it done 
And John Tollison gets the save. The Rangers win it tonight by a 2-1 to count. Oh, goodness. You know, sometimes it's just in the cards. It's almost like it's, it's fate that the Rangers were going to win this game. Rangers hit some balls hard that were caught. Don't mean to diminish that, but Red Sox hit a lot of balls tonight right at people. The Rangers had some good defense.